have to make friends. <laughs> Hello friends! Ivy here. And I'm Inky. It's Galentine's Day! <laughs> Yay! So Inky and I decided that we wanted to do some turn of the century tea gowns and we decided that Valentine's Day was kind of the perfect opportunity. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what you're wearing today? What was your inspiration? Did you look at fashion plates? My design is from a Vogue magazine. It's actually one of their patterns that they were selling. It's dated 1901. It's a little different because I didn't actually finish in time. The kind of the nature of the beast is that when you have a costuming deadline, it's either not done or it's finished with hot glues. <laughs> My gown is also from 1901. I didn't take mine from any particular inspiration. I took elements from quite a few different places. The soutache pattern is from an extant example that I found in an old Victorian magazine. I made mine in two pieces, which is actually not very typical for tea gowns. It's actually normally just all one piece. Yeah, and I also used upholstery fabric, which if, 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 it is what it is. <laughs> We're gonna be a lot of footage of us eating. <laughs> Should they be aware of the fact that we're nerds who wrote down questions, or should we like pretend <laughs> that this is like it's a up to you? Thing? Like, okay. I don't want to hide. I'm like, I am who I am. So, Inky, how did we meet? <laughs> that was so long ago. I'm not sure at this point. I think it was at Joan's Lolita meetup in her like. I don't think we really talked. Yeah, I don't think we really talked all that much at that at that point. Yeah, we kind of just like saw each other. This is how Lolitas behave in the wild. <laughs> we kind of like are around each other for yeah. a long time. We don't really talk. It was like, you were, but I didn't know you. Right. Yeah. It's like very hard, weirdly, to make friends in the Lolita community. It seems like people are a little standoffish. I think it's because I always assume. <laughs> was that you or me? I think that was me. <laughs> Your butt just buzzed. <laughs> what is in there? <laughs> I feel like everyone kind of assumes that everyone else like doesn't want to be their friend, which is not the case. So like everyone's like waiting for somebody else to make the first move. It's true. There's a lot of like, come talk to me because I won't come talk to you. Right. Which yeah. is hard because a lot of people are like very introverted. So I don't, I don't know if they intentionally do it, but. No, I'm sure they don't, but I'm just as much guilty of that as anyone else. So I can't complain too much, but it is hard sometimes I think. Totally. And like we are in Seattle as well, which makes it really difficult sometimes. Lolita's plus like the Seattle freeze, which is an actual phenomenon. So the Seattle freeze is the idea that Seattleites are friendly, but they're not your friend. It's very difficult to break into friend groups here in Seattle. I have no idea why that is, but it's like a documented phenomenon. It's a real thing. It is. And I've actually learned a little bit about it since then. My partner is from Seattle. Everybody has friends from when they went to school. So they like are friendly and nice, but they're like, well, I already have enough friends. I don't need to get to know any more people. I think a big part of it is the fact that Seattle's a city of transplants. So when those friend True. groups already exist, only with other transplants. Which we are. Yeah. Not people who have lived here for a while. I'm glad we found each other though. I know, I agree. Okay. Do you want to tell the Joanne story? <laughs> yes. Or should I tell it? We can both tell it. Okay. I'll tell it from my perspective. Maybe it'll be different for you. I had to be at the store for Black Friday at what? 5 a.m. I was just so tired from the night before. No one I know is gonna show up at 5 a.m. Like this is a ridiculous shift. Who would show up at 5 a.m. on Black Friday? Okay, in my defense, I'm a really early riser anyway. I didn't especially get up for Black Friday. I was just already awake. It was really convenient to actually have other people be awake at the same time as me. Inky commented that from my perspective, it might have been different. It is not. <laughs> that is exactly the same sentiment. I think I had not combed my hair. I think it honestly helped. We thought no one would see us. We were just there. I think you were like, the only person I cut fabric for that morning. <laughs> I think yeah, I'm the problem right? right after. I'm the problem. I'm the person that actually shows up to Black Friday. No, but it was a really good icebreaker. It did. It worked out. I think we actually made plans that day. Yeah, That's I think the first time. I texted you. I was just like, hey, you want to hang out? Because why not? Like, yeah. we'd already seen each other at our. I'm so glad that you did. Yeah. Because I probably would have been too shy to do that. So. I'm gonna eat another. Yeah. 
Okay, so next up is how did you get into historical costuming? And actually I'm very interested in the answer to this question because I have no idea. So. It kind of goes back to cosplay. I love the artist Sakizo and she does lots of historically inspired outfits. Mm -hmm. And I started making rose tea cup, something like that. And she had like a bustle in the back and I was just like, I have to make this. And that was kind of like my first foray in mm -hmm. historical costuming. Definitely more like fantasy and inspired mm -hmm. side, but leaning now more towards accurate, like fashion plates and stuff. <laughs> yeah. And I take a lot of inspiration from you, obviously, because oh, your journey has been incredible. <laughs> doesn't feel that way sometimes. Sometimes I look on the things that I'm sewing and I'm like, why do I still suck at this? <laughs> like it feels that way sometimes and I think I'm just too close to it, you know? And yeah. I'm just like, Ugh. Yeah, but when you like take a step back and really see the breadth of your work, it's very impressive. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Let's segue. You're embarrassing me. Okay. Um, the next one is favorite era in fashion. No, how did you get into oh, historical costuming? I <laughs> like interviewing you. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> mine is not nearly as sophisticated as yours. I felt like Halloween was too short. It was the thing that I looked forward to the most throughout the year and I was constantly like on the prowl for new events that I could make fancy costumes for. I got interested in 18th century costuming, which I have since long since moved on from. I don't make anything related to 18th century anymore. So what's your favorite era in costuming? So my favorite era is definitely like turn of the century, 1900s, mm -hmm. but kind of with like a focus on East meets West. Like I really love 1900s in Japan mm -hmm. when they started integrating like Western fashion with their kimono and their amazing fabrics. Like it just, mm, it just does it for me, just that like fusion, mm -hmm. but also like the experimentation with textures, like with the crazy, like mm -hmm. I love Japanese mate, whatever, like that flavor of, I don't know, I don't know, something different and something that I'm also more familiar with, with my like Korean past, not my Korean yeah. heritage. <laughs> You're like, past. I used to be I Korean. used to be Korean. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen that tea gown? Yes. I was the like, blue, I don't even think to describe line. it. Yeah. I'm like, of course you've seen it. I love like, that. But, I don't know if I have a favorite era. I did a ton of 1895 stuff. I don't know what it was. I think I just was really angry at the pandemic for depriving me of any opportunity to make anything interesting. So I was like, you know what? Revenge sleeves. Because the 1890s has the most ridiculous sleeves. So I did a lot of that for a while and I think I'm kind of moving on to more Edwardian stuff, like turn of the century. Yeah. yeah. Everything but 1903. I just don't like that sleeve. It doesn't look good on me. It's a weird sleeve, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, the, it's like the pagoda you one. It like hangs down. It's all like, man, it's weird. I'm like the, you know what I'm talking about? You don't about? like the, the droopy No, ones? this one is cute. It's the one that's the like a belly, one. like yeah. the saggy belly Edwardian. That's like 1903 and it looks terrible on me. I hate it. Oh, that's actually a good segue into our next topic, which is least favorite. <laughs> I don't know if I have the least favorite era, to be honest with you. I love even like the ridiculous- Don't say 1830s. Were you about to like, that? Yeah. No. <laughs> I don't mind it. I think it's cute. I think it's because it kind of reminds me of Lolita fashion, honestly. I guess. <laughs> I find Regency a little bit boring sometimes. I think that's my complaint too. I'm like, the 1830s is really stupid, but at least it has a point of view. At least it has a personality. It doesn't apologize. Right. <laughs> I feel like Regency just it is just so much nothing. It's just everyone's wearing a white dress all the time and it's all the same silhouette and it's just so pointless. <laughs> now that Bridgerton's come out, I'm like not looking forward to seeing that thing but <laughs> my Regency dresses. Maybe people will make them out of white fabrics though. That's true. At least Bridgerton did that, is that it's like very colorful and has a lot of beautiful fabrics. I like that more. Like I'm not the biggest I agree that people should strive for historical accuracy in terms of silhouette, styling, etc., fit, but I mean, it's your fashion and you should wear it 
the way you want to wear it. And if you like certain colors, you should wear those colors because I agree. you're not trying to like cosplay the past. You're trying to be right. fashionable as yourself. I think that's something that I do think people sometimes miss is that it's so easy to get so caught up in historical accuracy that you forget to make something that you're excited to wear. Exactly, yeah. And I think people worry a little too much about getting criticized for not being perfectly historically accurate. It has not happened to me that many times, and at least one of the times I probably deserved it. <laughs> historical accuracy. I can like complain about that all day, because I do think people can be very extra. Uppity. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So Inky, what has been your favorite costuming or fashion event? So this one's Lolita related because I haven't been to like any historical events, costuming events. In San Francisco, they invited the guest Minori, oh. who is mm. my style goal, style goal, yes. idol, inspiration. And she was just always amazing, so elegant, like so dedicated to her art, and then she did like a tutorial on how to do her makeup on some mm -hmm. a model and Oh, it's just so nice to see like everyone dressed up and have that guest and I love when like Lolita's or anyone like when they have a get together like teach things mm -hmm. because I love to learn and everybody enjoys you know learning about their hobby. I agree. Actually um, I was struggling to come up with what I thought would be my favorite costuming event uh, but I would have to say costume college which I was lucky enough to get to go to the year before the pandemic started. So nice. Unfortunately, it has now officially been canceled for the second time, so I won't be going this summer. But there was something really special about just being with my people. Yeah. It's so like refreshing to be with humans who get it. Mm -hmm. And it's so rare because like people don't really understand your hobby and you know, people are very polite about it and willing to listen to you talk about it, but it's so nice to be around people who have the same enthusiasms that you do. What's your ideal celebration? I do feel obligated to say this one. Which is true. This is the best celebration of all time. <laughs> Hanging out with Inky is amazing. But I've always daydreamed about throwing like a big house party. I've always dreamed of something like the Duchess of Devonshire's Ball, which is one of like the greatest costume balls of all time. So it's historical costumes, but it's also costumes, like actual costumes. And I just think that would be so magical. What would you do? Mostly I want to create like these different themed gardens around my home. And one in particular is like the rose garden and the other one is like the spider lily garden and the hydrangea garden and the Japanese tea garden. And every time in the year the flowers are blooming or whatever foliage is in season, I would like to send out invitations and be like, it's the hydrangea tea party, please attend, like RSVP. Oh and then have all my lovely ladies, like we can pick like an era or something, and or even just a theme and people can show up and we can have like an extravagant affair. A big garden party, that yes. sounds so magical. Yeah, I mean right now it seems like a fantasy, but uh, that's exactly what I want. I think it is now, but it won't be soon. I agree. <laughs> picturing myself like sweeping around orchards or something. <laughs> Just benefiting from all your hard work so that I don't have to do any of the gardening. I love gardening, so. I don't understand why. It's so, so little... satisfying. This is like the one point of tension in our relationship. Look at how beautiful yes. she is. Yes, I have plants as an obligation because I think they look nice. Not because I enjoy watering them. It's a chore. Well, you like doing chores? It's like having a conversation because they tell me when they're thirsty and I'm like, oh, here you go. It's like a nurturing thing. I enjoy it. <laughs> really? I do. <laughs> it's so satisfying when they like get big and they bloom for you. Okay, sure, fine. You win this round. Don't judge me. It's not judgment. Oh, I'm talking to the camera. <laughs> so, Inky. What's something that people don't really know or realize when they're joining a new fashion or costuming community? Okay, there's two things I want to mention. Everyone there is a person. Don't ever forget that we're all just people under our ridiculous clothes. Like, we might have the same passions or hobbies, but we're all just people and we are lovely and friendly, but 
you're not going to be friends with every single person you meet at a community event. Your personality, your, your goals in life, they all dictate how close you can be. And I feel like that's kind of the thing that's hard with the Lolita community mm -hmm. as well is you, everyone there, like, I think wants to be friends, mm -hmm. but sometimes they don't realize that friendships kind of have to grow organically. You can't really force it. It's both the good mm -hmm. and bad of a Lolita event is like, you get to be around lots of cool looking people and like meet people, but mm -hmm. all you can really hope for is that you connect with someone like on just a personal level mm -hmm. and the clothes, they come after. Like, it's just, it's just a hobby. It's just weird clothes. You don't need to be friends with people who are only interested in your hobby. Right, I feel like it's hard because I do feel like I sometimes get like caught up in the idea that I'm like, want to be friends with everyone. And I do think that people go to those events because they want to be friends, mm -hmm. but you're not going to mesh well with everyone, which I think is very true. Um, I've been living in Seattle for six years now. This is one of two real friends that I have, <laughs> <laughs> which is actually a pretty good, it's that's a, good a bad statistic, yeah. it's not bad. You get a lot of acquaintances, mm -hmm. I think, is really what it is. And like that's there's nothing wrong with that too, and you never should like beat yourself up if you feel like, oh, why don't I have any friends? Like I'm sure everyone you talk to would love to be your acquaintance and like chat with you, but yeah, making real close friends in your hobbies hard. I agree. It takes time and effort, honestly. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's hard to maintain connections. One thing I would say that you should know when joining especially a community where you sew your own clothes. Nobody is looking at as closely at your clothing as you are. And I am so bad about this. And I constantly feel the urge to like make excuses and apologize for my clothing. And that you just need to take like five steps back and recognize that that's where people will stand when they look at your clothes is five feet away, not, you know, six inches from your nose. So mm -hmm. you kind of have to go a little easy on yourself and don't be intimidated by all the pretty things that other people are wearing because I can guarantee that they also have hems that they wish they did a better job on or the buttons are uneven because that's just the nature of the game, I think. All right, I think that's gonna be it for part one of this video. If you're interested in seeing the rest of this video, it's going to be posted on Inky's channel, Inky Soupy, at the same time as this video. So you can go over there right now to watch the rest if you're interested. Thank you for watching. No, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no finger guns. <laughs> we, we have standards in this household. <laughs>